If you've seen some of my other recent videos on upscalers, you will notice that I did a review about which upscaler was the best, but in that video, I limited all my upscalers to those devices that were less than $150. But in the comments, I got a request to review the Geffen Composite to HDMI upscaler. This upscaler, of course, is a little more expensive as it runs for about $250, but as the old adage goes, you do get what you pay for. And, and in this case, I think the Geffen device holds true to that statement. If you don't know what an upscaler is or how you would use one to convert videos, I suggest you check my other previous video out as I'll leave a link to it in the description and a card at the end of this video. But be aware, I am not a sponsored by anyone. I'm just a gadget guy that likes the practical sense of things and these are just my opinions, good or bad. Before we continue on our discussion around the Geffen upscaler, if you could do me a huge favor and hit that like and subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it and the YouTube algorithm will appreciate it too. Thank you. Now let's get into it. Now, if you don't remember what an upscaler is, in short, an upscaler takes some form of analog signal and upscales it or converts it to some digital form, generally turning a lower resolution video into a higher one. And, and it does this while trying to minimize the amount of distortion that is caused by the stretching of the original image to fill the larger screen. So if you've not seen my other video on upscaling, I'm gonna go ahead and compare the Geffen device against the top rated device from that other video, which, which was this the Yitronix upscaler. So out of the gate, let's just compare these two devices on price. The Yitronix device ran for about $38, but it did require you to get a better power supply due to the fact that the one that came with it was just junk and it produced noise in the video that it was converting. And you can watch the other video if you want to understand that better. But if you combine the Yitronix upscaler and the power supply, which was about $15, cost-wise that solution comes to about $55. If we use that as a starting point for comparison, the Geffen device runs for roughly $249 on Amazon as of the time of making this video. So we're talking almost a $200 difference. I'm gonna go ahead and throw out there that in this case, I do believe you get what you're paying for because I will admit the picture that the Geffen produces is very nice. And out of the box, I had no issues with the device in any way at all. So let's take this as an example, right? If you look at the same rafting video that I've been using and comparing the colors from the Geffen device, which are much more vivid, looking at the yellow in this raft as an example, it actually looks like it's yellow. Where if you take the Atronix color, it is more of this orange or washed out color. Now, I can't truly remember 20 years ago what really the color was of those rafts, but I have a feeling they're much closer to the yellow that we see on the screen. Picture-wise, I felt they both did a comparable job and are on par with one another from a picture point of view, but you do have to take that color point into count because it does make a difference. Also, I'm upscaling a video from 20 years ago, so I can't expect miracles here. And please note, these videos you see are the original untouched versions. I am not touching these up in any post-processing software. These are basically the tests out of the box from the devices the way that they came. So when we're going to begin comparing the features of these devices with the Atronics, the only real setting you can change is the resolution for which the Atronics will give you about 11 different options for output resolutions. And those do include some four to three and 16 by nine ratios where in comparison, the Geffen device will provide you 18 different possible options as I've displayed all of them for you on the screen here. I also put these in the description below, along with the table name that the Geffen uses, which they use the standards name. They don't really give you the pixel resolutions when you're in the menu options. If we were just talking about the electronics device, our comparison right now would be over. But the Geffen device gives you many other options you can choose from and even further adjust the video quality upon its output. As we can see here, the Geffen device has a menu button and this plus or minus on the side. Pressing the menu button will bring up an on-screen menu and that gives you a few other options that you can change. Walking through the menu, we can first see very clearly that we can adjust the contrast and the brightness as they're the top options there. Then under this fine tune option, we actually get the ability to change the hue, the saturation, the sharpness, and the noise reduction. Under the color option, we get the ability to change the red, green, and blue values. And with the size option, we can change it from any one of the five different choices, from full, which is the default, to overscan, to underscan, letterbox, and pan scan. 
If you didn't catch all that, you might need to rewind that again. Editing that was a lot of fun. The output option gives us the ability to select any one of the 18 different resolutions, as I've already shared with you, which includes multiple 4 to 3 and 16 by 9 aspect ratios. Under the sound option, we can choose whether we want the sound to come from the composite left right or the optical. We can also turn off the sound altogether, although I'm not quite sure why you would do that. You can also change the settings of the actual menu options and the location of where you want it to display on the screen, just in case you like to play with those type of settings. If we compare the two devices physically, the Geffen is more than twice the size of the Atronics. And for inputs, when we compare the Atronics to the Geffen, we can see that both of the devices have a composite input and an S-video input. Now the Atronics does have an HDMI input where the Geffen does not, but in most of the examples that I'm using trying to upscale analog signals, I don't think we really need the HDMI input. The Geffen device also has the ability to take an optical sound in addition to the composite left and right connectors. Now, as for the outputs, both the Atronix and the Geffen provide a digital HDMI as its output, and they both have an audio jack that also allows you to export the sound to some other means should you need to do it that way. Now, the Geffen device does have the additional optical output should you be using that as your sound method. Now, in the box with the Geffen, you will also find that everything that comes with it is high quality. It does give you a set of composite audio video cables, and the power supply that comes with it is also of a high quality. As as in, I did not have any of the unexpected power problems like I did with the Electronics and some of the cheaper uh, upscalers in my other video. Everything I plugged in with this one worked perfectly. And the Geffen power supply does come with all the adapters for international use, and it clearly supports both NTSC and PAL formats. So overall, the Geffen device is superior to the Electronics device, and it seems you will get a better quality image compared to the Electronics, but it will cost you a little more. So if you have that in your budget and you want the better quality, then I would have to agree with the folks that left the comments, and I'd have to go with the Geffen device, as it is a great upscaler and it's worth the money. So I'm gonna leave you with a few more samples here. And I had multiple requests to provide some longer samples to different devices. So I will be putting that video together and also putting those links down in the description. As always, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. And please remember to like and subscribe. Have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you next time.